There's that story of the man at Niagara Falls who tied a rope across the waters and was about to walk across. And a crowd began to gather and he asked, do you believe that I can walk across these Niagara Falls on this rope? And the crowd encouraged him. They said, we believe, we believe, we believe you can do it. Well, he steps on the, on the rope and slowly makes his way across. And the crowd cheers. Um, and now he says, do you believe that I can cross back across these Niagara Falls on this rope blindfolded? And they say, we believe, we believe, we believe you could do it. So gradually, you know, he, he makes his way back across the falls blindfolded. And finally he says, um, do you believe that I could cross these Niagara Falls on this rope blindfolded, carrying a man on my back. And again, you know, we believe, we believe, we believe you can do it. Um, and then he asks for a volunteer, right? And, and no one moves. Um, and the question is like, did they really believe? Okay. Like, we begin the season of Lent with um, ashes on our forehead as a sign that we believe. And on Ash Wednesday in the season of Lent, the church declares war on the world, the flesh, and the devil. And they say that the price of freedom is war. This is a war for our freedom. And the, the price of, of, of freedom is, is struggle. And it's one um, George Washington said that discipline is the soul of an army. Okay. Discipline restores freedom to us, the freedom to choose good over evil. And so this discipline of Lent is meant to help us to win that war. It, it makes, um, discipline makes small numbers formidable. It brings success to the weak and esteem to all. To be prepared for war is one of the most effectual means of preserving peace. Not only peace in the world, but, but peace in our soul. Okay. To be able to res resist sin and temptation is that means by which we preserve peace. And so when the church declares war on the world, it means charity, almsgiving. When the church declares war on the flesh, it calls it fasting. When the church declares war on the devil, it encourages us to, encourages us to pray. Because humility is the most fearful opponent of evil, the most fearful opponent of the devil. Like any army, discipline helps us to conquer ourselves. And, and there's a spiritual maxim that says, conquer yourself and the world lies at your feet. Conquer yourself and the world lies at your feet. Ultimately, we all want, we want the church as God's army. I know like we say, poor God. But God, God's army wants to conquer souls and, and bring them to Christ. Out of the darkness, into the light. Um, like, the world kind of says uh, that tolerance is the virtue we should practice, but G.K. Chesterton says that tolerance is the virtue of those who believe in nothing. Tolerance is the virtue of those who believe in nothing. I'm okay, you're okay. Uh, you know, that whatever floats your both theology it is not the philosophy of God's army. It's more like the doctor. The doctor loves the patient, and therefore he hates the disease. He, he wants to remove that disease which threatens the life of his patient. Well, well, so it is in the church. Jesus Christ is our healer, but, but sin is the threat to our divine life, the, the life of grace in our souls. And, and it, it is by conquering sin that we um, 
we grow healthy. We grow healthy and strong. Um, they say that the opposite of love is not hate, but apathy. Um, there's a story of a high school girl who bragged to her girlfriends that, that her parents allowed her to stay out until 2 in the morning. She bragged until one day she came to school crying when she realized that they didn't care about her. Okay. Love sets clear boundaries for the ones we love. Okay. Last week we read the Ten Commandments. God gives us clear boundaries. Um, and it, it's God's love that protects us by those boundaries. And when we cross them, um, God corrects us, brings us back. Um, and, and so we must have that same love. There's an expression they say, where there is no zeal, there is no love. Okay? We, we must share God's concern for souls. You know? They say the worst poverty is mortal sin. Okay? To try to lead others out of mortal sin, to bring them to the, the life and light of Christ. Okay? And the season of grace, which is, which is Lent, it is a time when mercy and grace are in season. You know, like certain times of the season, strawberry, certain times of the year, strawberries are in season or apples are in season. They're more abundant, more easily obtainable. Well, well grace is the season of Lent. Grace is, mercy, Lent is the season of grace when mercy and grace are made more available to us. So, so by following that discipline, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, that's how we obtain abundant mercy and grace, all the, the grace that God wants to pour out for us.